Hello and welcome to this week's Granny's Garden. Now over my shoulder you can see an olive tree so there's absolutely no prizes for guessing what today's video is going to be about. Two years ago I put up a video on how to care for an olive tree and I was inundated with messages, private messages, emails with photos asking me to hone in on a specific area of that video and to give increased information on exactly how to prune an olive tree. So we're going to attack that today and try and make sense of it. So let's dive right in with the questions. Question one, how many different types of pruning are there for the olive tree? Well, there are three different types. Training, maintenance and rejuvenation. Training is for the first three to four years of an olive tree's life. Maintenance is most of the olive tree's life and rejuvenation is as required. Is the pruning technique you use on a production olive the same as you'd use on an ornamental olive? Well, yes and no. Well, that was helpful, wasn't it? Let me explain. If left to its own devices, the olive tree will form a natural shrub-like shape with branches, trunk, stems coming up from the ground. That is why it is so important to the training pruning that goes on from the beginning of its life until it's about three or four years of age. That's why I always say that if you can afford it, it's best to buy a tree, an olive tree, from five years onwards, because that way the actual nurseries have already done the job for you and you know what you're buying. The skeleton is there and from then on it'll be maintenance pruning and occasionally rejuvenation pruning. But the actual structure part is done. But don't despair. If you haven't got enough money for an older tree, it is possible to train a younger tree. Now I'll show you how. Now my olive tree is an ornamental olive, but we're going to use our imagination because we've all got imagination. So we're going to imagine this is a production and it's got a single trunk. Now in the formative years from zero to four, what I'm looking for in a production olive is to get a strong leader, that ramrod streak. So imagine this is going straight up. And I'm going to set off a marker and that marker is three feet or one meter. And anything below that three meter, you just keep for those first years pulling it off because you don't want any branches to form below that three foot mark. Once the three foot uh, mark is clean, then you can let it fork out and you choose three or four branches at most in an open vessel shape because those are going to give you lots and lots of production. So remember for production, ramrod straight leader, clear from the three foot mark down and then let it open up into three or four branches. Open up into a vessel shape. Now my olive tree is an ornamental olive. In actual fact it's a little sunny so it is sterile so don't get any of this fruit dropping throughout the year. As ornamental you can have two versions either like a production olive with a single trunk which is fine or you can be more varied and go for a multi-trunk and this is a beautiful architectural statement in any garden. This baby is over half a century old. She was a quarter of a century old when she was brought into this garden nearly 30 years ago. And she is absolutely delightful. But she's well in her prime, still a little baby. She's going to live maybe, with a bit of luck, to be 2000 years old. So she's going to see all of us pushing up daisies. Once the skeleton has been formed, either for production or for an ornamental, then the training pruning finishes and the maintenance pruning begins. How often? once every two years. When? Well, if you Google this, it's going to tell you from December until April, but it's really important to hone in a lot closer. That's too ambiguous. If we're talking about the Northern Hemisphere, where I am, if your climate is very warm, like if you're living in Spain, but on the coast or down the south of Spain or somewhere where any type of area in the world where it's warm, consistently warm, then you can prune in January and February. If, on the other hand, you're in cooler areas, in my case, although I live in sunny Spain, I live halfway up a mountain, therefore I can't prune in January and February because the temperatures are consistently below freezing at night time. So I have to wait until March, April, preferably April, which is why I'm going to be attacking it this month in April. But the best friend of a gardener is always the weatherman. Before you start pruning, especially an olive tree, even if you're in the month of April, just have a look at the next few days or the next week to see there's going to be no hard frosts. If there is, leave it a few days, that's fine. If you've got a first, the next week or so free of frost, then go straight ahead. Why do you carry out maintenance pruning? Well, maintenance basically is what it says. To maintain, I'm going to maintain or even increase production if I'm looking for an olive production tree and I'm going to maintain the tree healthy. So what exactly am I looking for in maintenance pruning? Well, I'm looking for a good balance between wood and leaf. I need to be able to open up the canopy, 
to let the air and the light through but and this is very very important but at the same time I need to protect the bark with a dapple shade because this baby gets sunstroke well sunstroke sunburn it gets scalded it doesn't like to have the heat of the sun beating directly down on an unprotected bark because the bark lifts off and falls to the ground it's unbelievable a tree that lives in a hot country has to be protected from the sun so treat it a bit like a tourist a white skinned person going to the beach have that parasol to keep it safe <laughs> So that's basically what I'm going to be doing today. I'm going to be opening up the canopy, letting in the air, letting in the light, but at the same time making sure it's got that dappled shade so when the sun hits here strongly in July and August it is protected. At the same time, I'm going to pull back in a minute, I'm going to be doing some rejuvenation pruning with this. This tree is undergoing rejuvenation pruning. Now you can either do rejuvenation pruning in two ways. Either you can come in and be absolutely brutal, come in and chop off all of the knuckles further down and let it regrow virtually from scratch. I don't like this method, first of all because your tree looks pretty dire for several years and also the fact of what I mentioned before. If you take the canopy away you're going to get sun scald on the bark and that is not what you're looking for. The branches on your olive tree should be about this size and you'll be removing in your maintenance pruning every two years you'll be removing them as they get thicker. This of course wasn't done and you are left with some like this, far too big. This is a particularly important point, especially if it's a production olive, because bigger, thicker branches, although they will keep producing for up to 20 years, bigger, thicker branches produce an inferior olive and worse still, an inferior taste, quite a bitter taste, not what you're looking for in an olive tree. So you want to keep young, younger branches that produce a lot of fruit and a lot of good quality fruit. Now I'm pulling back here to give you an overall view. You can see I've got the ladder ready and waiting for the job at hand. Having a look at this tree or the canopy, you can see that the right hand side is more airy and open and the left hand side is a lot more dense. During the maintenance pruning of today, I'm certainly going to be dealing with that to make it a lot more airy and open to air circulation. On the right hand side, you can see there are some quite vigorous branches. Now you've got to be careful of these vigorous branches because before you know where they are, they're off like a lone wolf and make a church spire instead of a nice rounded shape. They can actually ruin the shape of your olive tree. So I'll be dealing with that as well. This particular olive tree has six different branches or six different arms that form the skeleton. And the end of each arm has like a knuckle and that is where the canopy should start. It shouldn't be starting further down the skeleton which should be kept always clean. But of course, this is an neglected garden and of course it wasn't kept clean. So I'll be dealing with that as well. I think the best thing to do to show you how to deal with the problems you encounter is to go arm by arm, have a look at each individual problem on each individual arm and see how I'm going to deal with it. So I think it's time to get cracking. Arm number one. This arm was producing absolutely nothing. And if you tap it, you can hear that very dead sound. It did have a few little twigs of growth here. Now olive trees do have one characteristic. They have a lot of latent buds all the way down the bark. So what I did was sacrifice this little bit of growth there was, cut it right back, Cut all this right back as well, which is growing here, in the hope that it would stimulate further down where it was still alive, growth. Now that did happen, and if I come down here, we will have to get down the ladder for a minute, and if I come down here, you'll see there has been growth. Now what I'm going to do today is, I can see this growth here, and there's now growth here. And with the beginning of the growing season, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to eliminate this growth, I'm going to leave this growth take over, and probably, in the next maybe two years, when this is completely taken over, I'll actually remove this dead part here. You can see the bark is flaking off very easily. I'm going to remove this dead part here and let this part be the new termination of this arm. So let's get going on this arm. So that's this arm done. If you encounter one of your arms that isn't giving any growth, remember that they do have latent buds. So try and stimulate it. If all of this is dead, try and stimulate growth further down. And when you get growth, I've got growth definite here and maybe a little bit here. So I'm going to leave it for the whole growing season. If I find that this doesn't grow, well then next year I'll come in 
and cut this off. If I find that this part does grow, then I'll come in and remove only this part. That way I'll have a new knuckle. Arm number two, and I'm going to get up close now in a minute, but the first thing you want to do is you come in and make sure you keep that skeleton clean. Anything that starts growing like that, keep it because it's very easy to get out of control. So just keep, you can pull them off with your nail, dead easy at this stage. Now in an olive tree, you are looking to have the growth from the end of the knuckle. So anything down, further down here, I want to remove. There are far too many branches. They're all crossing which ways and they're not growing where they should be. So the first thing you want to do is get rid of this small growth before it gets any thicker. Actually, I'll change my falcos. Now, the next thing I'll be looking for here is just like your roses, crossing branches. Those are far too close together. See, I'm opening them now. Remove any more spindly branches. And then there's a big whopper here. This should never have been let get to that size. They should be around about this size. And when you see them getting any bigger, well, in your maintenance pruning once every two years, you'd remove it to let some of the small, thinner branches remain. So what I'm going to be doing here is removing this big one, which would be a rejuvenation pruning, because that should never have been let and then removing things like the crossing one, which would be a maintenance pruning. More branches are now going to grow from this knuckle. And I'm going to choose the ones that are growing in the right direction. For instance, this one I've left, it's got a lovely soft arch, one going outwards and one going over towards the centre to give a nice dappled shade. I need to remove now this one, which is dead. And I need to remove this one, which has gone straight into the centre of the tree. This is what I'm looking for. Beautiful arching into the centre of the tree or arching outwards. Lovely arches. Not that. This is the lone wolf. So I'm going to follow this down, 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 and get rid of it. Now this I started work on two years ago because this was in very bad shape. The old knuckle wasn't giving up very much growth at all. So I decided to start a new knuckle. I'm getting some nice side branches out here. So what I'm going to do is bring this little knuckle, the new knuckle, further down again. I'm probably going to leave it there now forever and have the branches come out from below that point. But first thing we need to do is to get rid of this big, vigorous branch that just goes up and up and up and is ruining the shape. And this one is going into the centre, so I'll get rid of that as well. Now there's a nice collar here, so I'm going to bring it right down to that collar and it won't grow again and leave all the energy into the new knuckle. But first of all, get rid of this small growth that shouldn't be here. This one as well as below the knuckle, so I get rid of that one as well. Oh, there's the glitzy bitsy ones. And we'll tidy them up with the felt goes. Now I need to remove ones that are obviously crossing, like this one. Clean up ones that are obviously going to go into the centre, which you don't want. Just clean a few of these branches up. And there's one growing through. I want to get it from the other side. That's going through that hole, but in actual fact, it's starting down here. And we don't want a second knuckle, so I'm just going to be removing that little growth there. There we go. There's just one more branch I'll be removing now, and that is this one here, because it is going right into the center, and 
plenty of dappled shade provided by the rest of the canopy but this one is going to get thicker and thicker and I don't want it there so I'm just going to remove that one and then that knuckle will be finished for this year. So let's see if I can do it with a lopper. I'm not quite sure because if it was lower down I'd be able to do it but I'm not quite sure at this height if I'm going to... No, <laughs> I'm going to need a ladder. I'm get close to the collar. I can actually use the tree as a brace. Here we go. Arm number four is a bit of a shame. This was a vertical water sprout. Now, these trees do have a tendency to send up vigorous vertical sprouts, which, like any tree, has to be removed immediately when you see them. You don't have to wait for pruning time. It was let go on and it's got thicker and thicker and thicker and has formed this big mass. If I come around the other side, you'll see that it is quite a big structure. So I'm not going to be touching the rest. I'm just going to leave it be for this year, but I am going to be removing this. I'll remove some of the side branches so I can see what I'm doing and then get out my trusty mini chainsaw and take this off down here. And that'll be that for this arm. Now, arm number five is chock-a-block full of hundreds of these tiny little branches. So I'm going to be definitely clearing up that and I'm going to be leaving this branch and this branch which are nice new vigorous growth but not overly vigorous. And as regards the big thick one, I'm not going to remove it totally. I'm just going to remove the right hand side here which is growing very very high and leave the one on the left which is opening out and giving a nice aspect to the tree. And definitely I'll be removing anything below the knuckle and this one also which is trailing all the way down over my Edith P of Rose and taking away the light. So this one is a lot of maintenance pruning. There's just too many branches. It's a chaos of branches. So you're going to be clearing some of that out, opening it out. The main thing here regarding juvenation pruning, we'll just be taking one half of the thick one off, leaving the other one on. And that's basically it regarding juvenation. All the rest is maintenance here. And oh boy, is there maintenance. Would you just look at that puzzle. Now let's tackle arm number six, which is really 6A and 6B. The problem with this one is there's a lot of direct vertical growth. If you see this one up here, it just goes straight up. We're looking for branches that are more open, that will shelter part of the inside of the trunks, part of the outside of the trunks. And certainly if it's a production tree, you're not looking for height. You're looking for accessible branches to be able to take those olives off of the branches. So we want to avoid any of this vertical growth because basically vertical growth only adds height to the tree, doesn't give much shade and certainly for production wise is not what you're looking for. So what I'm going to do now is remove that vertical spike. I have already removed a big thick one from around the corner. You can see here this was again going vertically up and I've left the little one that's going out to the side which is quite nice and soft and it's frothy at the top. As you can see here on 6B, I'm going to get up the ladder. 6B as I'm calling it has, like the previous ones, got a whole lot of chaos going on but the main one to get rid of is the vertical one right now and then we'll worry about the lesser ones afterwards. I just want to remove some of these dead branches that just haven't received enough light because the canopy was too thick here. You can hear them actually, no life in them whatsoever. There is a heck of a lot of them, so I'm just going to clean this out now and leave it a lot 
airier and a lot less chaotic. Now we're just going to have a look at some of the branches I cut. This would be maintenance pruning. Basically taking off branches throughout the canopy to thin out the canopy. This is also maintenance pruning. This is one of these lone wolves. Look at the length of it. It goes straight up into the air. Far too vigorous the growth and wrecks the shape of the tree. So that's also maintenance pruning. Getting rid of those lone wolves. This on the other hand would be rejuvenation pruning. Far, far too thick a branch to have on an olive tree. If I point the camera up from inside the tree, you can now see that although I have dappled shade, I can now see the sky through the canopy, which is what you are aiming for. Remember, this is maintenance pruning, and maintenance pruning will be done once every two years. Rejuvenation pruning is, on the other hand, as required. And as I said before, you can do it either of two ways. Either you come in, cut all the tentacles or all the arms off the trees and start from scratch, in which case you're going to be several years without uh, any type of canopy or decent canopy at all. Or you can come in bit by bit. I'm not cutting any more on. There are still thick branches around. But leave that for another year. And certainly I wouldn't come in now next year and do another big hard pruning like that. I'd leave it to recover for a bit. Especially if it's an ornamental one. I want my canopy. I want my shade. I love to sit under here. Beside my little fairy. So dappled shade it is. One of the good things about doing maintenance pruning. If you do it correctly. This is very easy to take off with a lopper. You don't need a saw. It's only when you start letting it get out of hand. That you need to get saws, electric saws and all that paraphernalia. If you keep it in check. It's very easy to maintain. An olive tree should be like an excellent beer. A good strong base and a wonderful light frothy head. Well I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm now under the shade of my olive tree, my dapple shade and I hope to see you here next week again in Granny's Garden. Bye bye now.